it's, it's a good book. It's a good book. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, I like it. It's my favorite book. Yeah. Hey, um, the hotel is showing all the Harry Potter movies on a loop every day, and yeah. I just saw you in Chamber of Secrets the other day. Yeah. You look so different. How old were you when you first started filming? How old was I? Yeah. I was 16 when we started filming the first film, which was eight and a, nearly nine years ago. Nine years in September. So it's been but it's strange because it doesn't feel like a long time at all. It feels like yesterday. It's just kind of flown by, really. It's, it's a bit weird. But yeah, I've been 18. Yeah, I was 18 when we well, shot Change of Secrets. When I still had a really, really dodgy haircut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, the, the sad thing about that was that that's actually what my hair looks like every morning when I wake up. Um, and we got to doing that, that breakfast scene at the borough and... They were like, well, we're going we're to give you bad hair for this scene because we think it'd be, it'd be fun for those who have bad hair. Because, you know, there's something, about, there's something about making a film where I don't know if anyone really notices, because you don't, but everyone has the same haircut all the way through the films and wears, like, the same clothes all the time. Yeah. And, like, you know, we're, we're, at, we're at Hogwarts for a year, and nobody goes for a haircut yet. Their hair doesn't grow. It's, <laughs> these things always bug me with movies, the kind of the continuity of the perfection all the way through. It's, it's kind of strange. But, yeah, no, I used to turn up to, to the hair and makeup department every morning when we were shooting that scene with the hair as it was. Um, and they'd spend 40 minutes faffing with it. And, 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 and it just looked exactly the same as it did when I came in. So I don't really know what they did. But, <laughs> but now I'm old and I have a sensible haircut now. And anyone who anyone who was at Witching House saw the crazy hair I had then, so you know nothing gets worse than that. Oh, really. <laughs> well, you're all a very quiet bunch. Aren't you? <laughs> this is not what I expected from here. You know, I, I, I've come across lots of very cool people who have lots to say. So <laughs> you're all—I like, don't know—I don't know what's going on. You're all very quiet now. Talk. No, not a clue. Um, she was, she's been really guarded, actually, about it. It was um, the only thing she said to me the first time I met her was before I even. So I was like, we're at the um, the read through for the first film, and it was the first time we met kind of anyone really. And um, and we turned up, and we were all there, and this room full of like incredibly famous actors, and a lot of young kids kind of going, "Why the hell are we here? What happened to to, to make this all appear in front of us?" Um, and Joe was there uh, for the first read through, and she, you know she was talking to Dan and Rupert and Emma, and you know saying how excited she was and everything. And um, and I kind of wandered over to, to sort of to talk to her, and before I got a chance to talk to her, she just looked at me and went, "You must be Percy," <laughs> <laughs> which is kind of that was acceptance for me. You know, that, was the, that was the best accolade you could get. That she actually looked at me and went, "Yes, you are Percy. This is, this is good." Um, but no, I talked to her after the, um, well, it's just after the fifth book came out, which would have been, when would have that been? Would have been anyone? 2003? Yeah? Yeah. Um, what film were we on then? Azkaban. Yeah, Azkaban. So she, um, I, I, I got hate mail after the fifth book came out because of Percy <laughs> deserting the family. Um, so I told her about it and said, oh, I'm getting hate mail and it's not my fault, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you. Um, and the only, that's the only clue she's given me is that the time she went, don't worry, he'll redeem himself. And obviously he didn't realise that it was going to be quite such a redemption, but that was, that was pretty cool. I've been, I've been holding on to that one for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, so that was, that was fun. You're bouncing, darling. That was me. Not, not because he is intimidating, he's really, he's a lovely, lovely guy, but he's Alan Rickman, you know, <laughs> out of all of them, I mean, you expect, you expect Julie Walters to be as lovely and wonderful as she is, and you expect, um, I don't know, Maggie Smith to be how you see her in films, Alan Rickman always plays bad guys, and, you know, you imagine him to be the Sheriff of Nottingham, it's just, that, that is Alan Rickman, but, yeah, he was, he was quite intimidating. 
Snake? Because the first time I met him, he was was on set and he was dressed as Snake. He was in character, and he's he's quite keen on he, he keeps himself to himself generally anyway. But when he's in character, he he stays there. Not not to like not to the extent that some people do. I mean, he's, he's not Dustin Hoffman, but um, because Dustin Hoffman is kind of crazy like that sort of year. But um, yeah, he, it was a little bit kind of snaky when I first met him. <laughs> Said hello and you know was, was having polite conversations with a group of us. And I like this guy. Hello. <laughs> He's really cool. Although it's rather embarrassing because my mum has a huge crush on him. <laughs> <laughs> and then I think everyone's mum does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not just the mum. No, no, no. <laughs> but, yeah. but he's cool. He's, he's a nice guy. They're all nice. Actually, I'm not sure if I've been with him around the beach. Yet. Say no. But I, I can't imagine that he's the mark. I think, you know, we're all in the same boat. So. Are you here? Okay, so I guess I have two, which was, like, did you want to be anyone in particular, and did you audition for anyone other than Percy? Because, like, I know the guy who plays Neville, which I forget his name, but he was like, yeah, I auditioned for Harry, and I was like, really? <laughs> so. I, I auditioned for Percy. That's what I wanted to be. Awesome! Well, because um, the way it worked when I auditioned for it was I saw, there was, they, they advertised it on telly, even you know, on um, Children's BBC, and said, look, they're going to make a film with Harry Potter, um, they're looking for kid actors who aren't really actors, they want sort of nobodies essentially to, to fill the roles. What they've done is they've given us this, this address, what you need to do is send off a photo and a, um, a letter saying, I'd like to play so and so because blah 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 blah. And that's how Rupert got it as well, actually, he did the same thing. Um, but I wrote off and I was 16 at the time and I was a prefect of school and I'm ginger and I thought kind of, well, if I'm going to do anything and I'm like, if I'm likely to get any role, it's going to yeah. be Percy. It's kind of the only role I stand a chance of getting. And yeah, he's, he's all right, really. He's a kind of, he's a small enough role that I, I thought I had a chance. Because, I mean, I've done acting at, I've done acting at school with youth groups and stuff, and played the lead in quite a lot of them. So I, I, I kind of knew I, you know, I'm kind of an all right actor, I suppose, because I got the leads and things, which was great. Um, but I never, I've done it. Who, who would have thought, who, I don't think any of us would say, yeah, we knew we were going to get the part. But I didn't. I mean, I wrote off in April 2000 to get the, to get the audition, and they said, if you don't hear anything in two weeks, you know, forget about it. You've yeah. not a chance. And the two weeks went past, and nothing, nothing at all. And I forgot about it, and I had, it, I had it in school exams, and kind of got all that out of the way. And then in the middle of the summer holidays in late August, they, they rang and went, hi, um, we're ringing for Productions, um, we've got your application letter for, for an audition. Um, what are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm picking up my exam results, but um, nothing. <laughs> well, would you like to come from? Yes, I'd like to come from. So they, uh, they passed over some a couple of some signs of scripts and things to look at and learn. And, and yeah, I went in and I met her shape and cast the first film. And I was with her about half an hour, and she said, Well, thank you. How would you like to come back on? Day and meet Chris and David and the producers and, and have, a, have another audition with them at the studio. And I was like, yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to let me think about it. <laughs> so I did that. I was there with them about 15 minutes. The audition was weird because I'd learned all this script for them. I'd learned it. The scene they gave me was um, it was the Percy leading the kids up to the common room and you know, the Percy is this way, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it was also all the stuff that sadly didn't make it to the film. I really hope they put it on the um, ultimate DVD thing that they're going to do, apparently. Um, it was all the stuff we shot with Peeves, um, which we actually yeah, shot, and I, I was know. gutted that they cut it, because um, it would have been a lot of fun. But, um, yeah, so I did all that, and then they, um, I learned all that for, for the first audition, and then I was kind of prepared to do it again, and they, they didn't do that. They had me improvising, um, which I hate. I hate improvising. It's horrible. Um, and yeah, and they sort of went, well, thank you very much, you know, it's great to see you, have a, have a nice day, blah, blah, blah. Um, the next morning the phone rang, I was out in the garden 